Hello everyone, this is Diane. I have another flea market haul to show you. Today is the first Saturday of October and I've been going up there to the Tioga Downs Flea Market. It's actually called Tioga Downs Antique Market. Um, I've been going there the first Saturday of each month and so I went today. Um, they're open, I think, up until almost Christmas, but I don't normally go in December. I don't know if I've ever gone in November, so this might have been my last trip. I might go in November, I'm not sure. But uh, I found some things, so I'm going to share them with you. First of all, is I have my camera zoomed in on this really pretty paper that was used as a drawer liner. And um, Wanda, hi Wanda. Hi Karen, I hope that you're watching my video. Um, Wanda and Karen were both their vendors at the flea market and Wanda actually runs the barn I guess. She's always the one that's there and I think she's in charge. But she often sets things aside for me that she thinks I would like and sometimes most of the time I say yes please and thank you and sometimes I say no. Today it was one of each. But I definitely wanted this. Isn't it gorgeous? It was used to line a drawer and it was folded this way so that the pattern of the pretty paper wasn't even showing. But it protected the paper. So I can cut these up. They're just, they're just beautiful. I'm amazed by it. So that was a good start. Um, the other, I want to get these two things off my table here, so we'll go with these. This is a roll of wrapping paper with a really cute Santa Claus. And it's a good sturdy one, so I think that'll be, that'll work well, being cut up and used. And then this wallpaper is just beautiful. It was a full roll. I had to take the wrapper off it. Isn't it beautiful? So I'll be cutting this up and putting it in my shop as well as keeping some for myself. Because I don't need that much. You'll notice this beautiful chenille bedspread on my table. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit now that I've moved that paper. Um, so I picked up this chenille bedspread. It's got the beautiful flowers. You see a couple tulips. There's also this type of flower. And then the white chenille lines, there's a little square here that has blue and pink. So there's a variety of flowers, and I, I keep looking at it, and this time I picked it up. Let's go through the books before we get any further. I've also, I also keep looking at this book because I love Peter Pan, and I love Alice. This is one of those Popsy Turvy books, so it's got the Peter Pan story and then you flip it over and you have Alice in Wonderland. So maybe I can make two different journals out of it, just create a new back cover for these for these, and use these as a front cover. We'll see. Um, I just picked this up because of the fun pages inside. They're good, good pages for folding into a journal and they have pretty pictures. I got a lot of little cookbooks today, so that was fun. This is Learn to Bake. You'll love it. And I don't think I could find a date on this one. Oh, 1947. I should have opened my curtain again. Hopefully it will stay over there. Um, General Foods Corporation. So they have Swan's Down flour, Cake Flour, Calumet Baking Powder, and Baker's Chocolate. And I love these. Shortcuts to Home Sewing. This looks pretty old. 1926. that. Okay. 
and how to make draperies, which is also from the Singer Sewing Company. And this one is 1929. So there's lots of pictures of curtains in there. And this was free. It was just of some pages from the Jingle Bells Golden Book. But I'm about to make Christmas junk journals pretty soon, so I just grabbed these. I can take out the pages that are useful and use those. I got some Golden Books today. I picked up Cinderella, Hansel and Gretel. Baby Looks. I don't know if I've ever seen this one. Eloise Wilkin. The uh, Hansel and Gretel one is, is Eloise Wilkin also. This is 1971. So cute. And The Animals of Farmer Jones. 1971. <coughs> Original copyright is 1950 or 42. It's really cute. And I think this is Eloise. Yeah, Eloise Wilkin. Good little, bad little girl. I don't think I've ever seen this one. And the story is written by her also. 1972, originally 1965. Once there was a good little girl and a bad little girl, they both lived together in the same big house. That's cute, because I think they're the same girl. Because we have good and bad in us, right? And then we have birds, more Eloise Wilkin, 1972, and When I Grow Up, this one looks like it's from the 70s, yep, 72, uh, originally 68. cute. Um, got some more books. A lot of these are really, really neat old cookbook, little paperback cookbook things, so wait for those. These, This is the Three Little Kittens, and it's a really cute old book. Um, the title page is gone, and like some of the pages are missing, but it's got adorable pictures. There's the kittens and the doggy book. MCMXL. Is that 1950? And we have Goldilocks. The three bears. But there's a page missing here. Puss in Boots. Um, I got this one because it was just too cute. Look at the cover of that. Numberland, part two. They're adorable. And it's got pic cute pictures inside. Along with the math. My math books were never this cute. Nineteen twenty-eight. And the recipe books. New recipes for good eating. Look at those kids. Trying to get another donut. 1948. Ooh, that looks yummy. I 
I love the look of the old pictures of recipes from the 40s and 50s. Crisco, cooking the modern way. Doesn't look very modern, does it? Planters Edible Oil Company. Oh, there's copyright, 1948. So it's modern for 1948, how's that? The 1966 Ready Reference Almanac, Weather and Planting Tables, Astrology, Home Helps, Daily Planning Schedule, Handbook of Valuable Information from the Citizens National Bank in Tunkhannock, Pennsylvania. My husband grew up in Tunkhannock when he was little, before he went to the Milton Hershey School. Well, I guess his family still lived there while he went to school. But it's got the little calendar part and the ch uh, charts. So I thought these would be really cool. This is a cookbook put together by a high school, I believe. So it's food, which stands for From Ordinary to Opulent Delights. And according to the introductory page, it was compiled and edited by the members of the Art Club of Binghamton Central High School. With the cooperation and confusion of everyone involved, we finally reached the impossible completion. The artwork was done by members of the club, so it does not have a date. It should have a year in here, but it doesn't. But it is full of pictures that the students drew, as well as recipes. So it's just something fun and different. There's a mouth eating a corn, an uh, ear of corn. <coughs> Ooh, they drew beer in it. Beer biscuits. Desperation casserole. <laughs> she does look desperate, doesn't she? Chicken confetti. So there's a chicken twirling something and confetti falling and there's a bottle of booze down here. Peanut brittle. Marshmallow cream fudge. Anyway, that's pretty cute. I got this picture. Isn't that pretty? Love that couple. I got some more pictures too. They're in here somewhere. So this book says, I think it says free. But it's really pretty. There's the cover. Look at the pages. Let's see who the uh, illustrator is. I've seen the language of flowers illustrated by Kate Greenaway, but I don't. I don't see her name, so this can't be her. Doesn't say who the illustrator is, but it's pretty. So I got the Borden's Eagle Brand 70 Mag Magic Recipes. There's no date, but it looks like 50s. The pictures, the, the book is in really good shape. But the pictures definitely look like 50s. And Baker's Chocolate and Coconut Favorites. It just says third edition. It's just got lots of fun pictures in it. Recipe collections from General Foods Kitchens. So this is an order form you could order. I just got this Joys of Jello book, I think, or else I, I saw it. Maybe I didn't pick it up, but I saw it at a flea market. I remember it because I used to have it in the 70s or 80s. Cakes and torts. Look at that. This is um, Culinary Arts Institute. 
Chicago, Illinois, 1965. Really cute pictures. Um, and there were also these, and with these, these cookbooks that I'm showing you right now, Sherwin-Williams Home Decorator. Very retro images. This is this was probably a giveaway from Glenwood Paint Store in Binghamton, New York. 1960. Yep, 1960. And along with that, there were the DuPont Home Painting and Color Guide from the same paint store. I don't see a year in this one. Looks like it's about from the same era though. And Sherwin-Williams Home Decorator. Nineteen sixty one. And we got the guide to better cooking from your gas company home economics department. So there's a blue one and a coral colored one. No year. But the paper is really good quality. And they're illustrated. I don't think they're the same. I didn't look to see if they were the same with just a different cover. This is just like basic information I'm trying to get to a recipe. Fish. Yep, they have the same recipes. I got a really good price on them though. Um, to your kitchen from mine. I got all these, this batch of recipe books that I'm showing you from the second barn. I haven't been finding a lot over there this year, but I did get a few things today. So I love the pictures in this. And this, old fashioned recipes. Just a fun little booklet to tuck into a cookbook journal. Good things to eat. Hot breads, meat, uh, meat dishes, and desserts. And butter cookie booklet from Pillsbury. Then I got these two envelopes that have recipe cards in them food service. Concord grape breakfast drink. I bought some Concord grapes today too. I stopped at the apple and cider stand in my town when I came home and got some grapes. I'm hoping to go to that uh, windmill farmer's market. It's a couple hours away. Uh, with my sisters where I buy a lot of Concord grapes. Hoping to do that um, in like two weeks. Two weeks from today. And again, these are from the 70s. And then I got this photo. A pretty girl. Um, good things to eat. My favorite chocolate cake. Look at that pretty picture. These would be good on the cover of a cooking journal, right? These covers. Better meals with gel cookery. Um, here's the other pictures I got. Look at that handsome man. And that handsome man. 
and this adorable little boy. And these were just playing with some postcards. IBM Club Swap and Shop. I got this because it's really adorable. It's saving money for Christmas for children, I guess. Oh, for a bill or a check. You have to fold that up really small to get it in there. So this will go in one of the Christmas journals that I make. Speaking of Christmas journals, I got some more gold doilies and some pink ones. I don't think there's very many in here, but I, I never see pink ones. And I think there's only two here. But I believe this was three for three for a dollar, so that's not bad. Let's look at these cards. I got some baby cards from the 50s and 60s. 1959 and 1961 specifically. Uh-oh, it says do not open package. I'm kidding. It's mine. I can open it. cards are in here. 20. There's just something about the look of old cards. I love them. Ah, oh, little cowboy. <laughs> And yes, I still have that those scrapbooks that I bought at the other flea market that were full of cards. So I will be putting packs together. There was another pack of baby cards too I could have gotten. But sometimes when I put old cards in the shop they don't sell as quickly as I think they will. So, And I have plenty. I picked this up because I just got some Halloween treat sacks and some Thanksgiving place cards. So I'm going to cut some of this into lengths and uh, so there's seven feet of it and put together some small little bundles of fall things. And I'll do that soon, get them in my shop. And I got this box of Pansy Stationery. I had just gotten some Pansy Note Cards. So I'll put together some stationery bundles with these. And I got a bag of damaged hankies, damaged hankies it says. This one's pretty. It has a Oh, I thought I saw a hole, but I guess I didn't. There's a little bit. There's a little hole there. And there. But we cut them up anyway. Oh, poinsettia. There's a lavender one. It's just a plain one. It's not a very pretty color even. There's blue with some tatting. And there's just plain white. And there's white with tatting. Ah, uh, this one's a bunny. <laughs> it's got a little hole where his foot should be. And a pretty green one. And then that one. And I got two cards of lace. This one is has five yards. 1960s or 70s. And it's pretty, isn't it? And I'm getting ready pretty soon to 
start working on the lace bundles. Probably won't put them in my shop till after I get back from my little vacation though. And this says 40s to 50s pink and white cotton ribbon. That's pretty. It's very, very pale. I splurged on these. These are millinery flowers. And I'm just going to be using these in my own projects. So it's got the leaves. They're vintage. Leaves and petals and these that I can take apart. There's a bigger flower, but I really want the little ones. So hopefully I can make some pretty projects with those. I almost didn't get them. But then I thought, how often are you going to find millinery flowers? And the colors are pretty too. I was happy to see this because I'm running low on my vintage Rick Rack, except for the baby Rick Rack. Oh, it's not all Rick Rack either, but I saw enough in there that I got it. There's some gold. I do have quite a bit of white. There's some yellow and red. Looks like that's all the Rick Rack. But there is some, this is bias tape, seam binding, seam binding, seam binding, and the rest is bias tape, which I don't use too much. Now oh, this one says seam binding, that black one is seam binding, the rest is bias tape. But for what I paid, that was pretty good. I'll use most of that. And then lastly, I have a couple sheets, several pieces of you know different sheets and pillowcases, and I'm going to be putting together a sheet bundle. So I got these two to add to it. This one has blackberries or something, but they're pale blue color. I hope I've been in camera all this while. And this with the big roses. Now this is a large pattern, and it's not it's spaced out, but. I would probably cut these, make make a fabric flip with them, or even just cut them out and glue them onto the page because they're really pretty roses. And that's what I got today. Tell me what your favorite was, and um, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and have a creative day. Bye-bye.